Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. The scene wasn't ordinary for them. Who knows what little brat had done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and we went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this any further. Oh, oh god. This is getting real. Hi guys, I was uh, getting ready for bed and I was like, I'm thirsty and you know what? I need another glass of milk. You know, I wasn't going to play this, but then uh, the creator of the game commented an alien emoji under my video and I'm like, well, now I have to. So now we're back. Are you telling me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies. It's dead. You're acting weird. Tell me instead of running your mouth, I've been restless. I need to gather my thoughts before quickly before going to bed. My thoughts are hiding from me. Hee <laughs> hee. That right? That's who? Yeah, I thought I'd been here before. I don't think I have actually. My bad. Sorry. Well, we take this seriously now. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 no. And no. If I even make the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. This one. Who, me? N no, of course not. I think if you forgot to put your mind... I think you forgot to put your mind block. I could see right through you. Rude. Alright then, so we need to find out a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything, even an inch? Yeah. My, oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun! And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what the best part is? You'll be the one doing it. I don't know. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make a decision. Why not continue down the road? Do what you want. Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny fly fly? Ah, this is so thrilling. thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down and after a moment, a small bag of light, ball of light, and warmth crawls out from underneath my sweater. Wowee! There's smoke coming from your clothes. Nah. Wowee! <laughs> Wowee, guys! There it is. That looks like a giant ass mosquito. To be honest with you. I carefully grabbed a firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Oh, God. <laughs> it tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah! This game ain't so bad. Yeah! Oh, is this the point and click now? Oh, sweet. Yeah, look at this. Look at your fucking room. Okay, let's look at these papers. And what are those? Ah, those. 
Those are the few photos of my best memories. But they're empty. I started them so intently that I burned them with my own eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's see here. Oh, oh. Let's do that. Since you're glitching out, I, might... I guess not. Pills? Cabinets? What's this? Nuts. Your usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's only incredible kind. It's the only kind of information I could take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle and restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Oh, your face. Oh, I don't like the idea of these fireflies just flying into your freaking ear. I don't like the sound of that either. You just, you sleep in a sleeping bag, don't you? <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig as deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks and returned myself to a sentence. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Look at you, you're cute. You're all sleepy. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting me to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. What? I said searching here is meaningless. Alrighty. Uh, let's check the pills. Oh, look at the amount of pills. It makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. You'll ultimately die anyway, so I worry. No, no, let's go to the first one. Yes, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Names could have been much worse. Ah, accusation. Of course not. It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I have a deep sigh. <sighs> Come closer and extend my hand. Ah, oh, it's so warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturned. Pills rain down from it along with them. A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple times, it finally lands on my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, upon my reach of my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. I don't like the idea of these fucking fireflies flying into your ear. What's this? That's not so bad. Actually, very intrigued of what these channels hold. Okay.
We just gotta find some good tunes. There we go. Good tunes. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling at least 300 feet off the floor. Are you joking? You're so sleepy! Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't even care. Yeah, I don't care. At all. Like, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for the thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh no, you don't. Then act normal. Okay, let's check this shit. Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, I kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. I need to just throw them out. Were you listening to me at all? You, you like the smell of dust and death? Hey, look. Uh, great. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> you trying to get out of here? Yeah, computer. Oh, look at my laptop. I haven't touched it in years, so it's covered in a layer of dust that's thicker than my finger. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Mm. I insist. I don't remember how I appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I spent my whole days in front of the screens. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have anything in for comfort living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives on the ground. You have everything for comfort, living, okay? Okay. Wonderful! And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. We will end up returning to that subject anyway. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house, brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most part, important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you, too. That means you are all the same, apart from the fact that they are born at that shop. You'll ask, what does this indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. It's time to try to avoid the stupid hamster analogies. You know, I'm not at fault there. So, I had a lot of friends online. Tens, hundreds of them. Possible to count. It is impossible, though. I had exactly 317 of them. Although, I guess nobody counts the exact numbers of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Don't get distracted. Oh, right. For my 317 friends, 68 of them were into gaming, just like me. 130 of them like drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling. When I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Right? You can split numbers evenly, no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew, of course, there were no real people exist on the web. I also understood that all my friends die in the moment I turn off my laptop. I still wasn't even a little bit worried. Why? You know what happened? What computer programs consist of? It's just com combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend, and I don't even care whether they know about my existence or not. 
Anyways, I was just saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose, its math mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I fall. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflected in it is my dim face. <sighs> it's a lot of raining. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey, let me know if you need a break. One day someone disappeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh. Suddenly a firefly slowly across the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that for myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Do you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. This firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. And it starts glowing again as it comes back to its senses. For some time it thinks about the further course of its action and flies up, dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. What about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. Do everything alright, I'll finish my story, maybe. You promise? I promise. And if you forget, they remind me with the code for example code word for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. And now let's keep searching for my fireflies. Finish searching. Ah, eh, we'll do this. I doubt all my compartments are locked. What if? We want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining? Okay. Can I do that one yet? No. Hey, a book. This is my sketchbook. Half of the pages are blank, which means it'll be good for a couple years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't it obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. You even realize what kind of nightmare that would kid turn into? Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead, it's too many to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of the other. Then how would I decide what action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. He lacks empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeper bag, the cracks and laminate, and the windows reflection. The sketchbook is lying on a stool from my height. It seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. Last string is buried on the previous pages, the way it should be. Too bad, I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks through the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with the headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. Even though the wind is still howling from every direction, it can only mean one thing. The notebook has opened to its first page. If we wait a little long, longer, the wind will close it. I won't look. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer. If I wait... Open your eyes. No. It's okay. Just do it. No, wait. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. Fine. Open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? This one one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. But did you? I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling goes louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of my drawing on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You could convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops for a moment. The world sinks to perfect silence, but only for a moment. 
The buzz that always seems to haunt me fills the surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, you made me so scared. Firefly blinks, flies up in an entrance of my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends a long, some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then buzzing dies down. Phew! Are you okay? We're running short of time, so let's continue searching. Oh, yeah. It's a nice, wholesome game. It's a nice, wholesome game. Nothing bad's gonna happen. That door's open. Ah, umbrella. It makes a faint sense of coolness. No wonder it's the only thing that defends against the clouds of my ceiling. Such a blessing that I can do without my help. Still, if I fly wouldn't hide in a place like that. It will catch a cold and be able to fly. You don't want to check it? I am sure we won't find anything there. Alright, search the trash can. I got close to the waistband and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and our garbage. Boring. There's nothing in there. Indeed, no self respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you there. Okay, backpack. I look down, my school bag, worn down and silly. It's almost screaming at its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also gurgling, decomposing, turning into a sicky, mushy substance. A cool image, I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Senseless cool. Right there, but I don't care. Is it me you're laughing at? What? I never, after all. You're not my pet. <laughs> I'm not going along with this nonsense anymore. Got it? Got it. Hey, it wasn't on purpose this time. Don't want to put your bag and set. Nothing special. Mostly just sorts of books. I'm taking all the pants, no books out of there. I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? You think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're long. All right, all right. What'd you do? Like most there. Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. Beds? By the way, I attended all my classes. The others always skipped. They really got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbing the warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into a car and went home. Mom greeted us there, had dinner, and went to our rooms. Um, what happened then? I don't remember. Does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Remember that bad? Please! Oh, fine. The day Dad put me out of school earlier, explaining that we need to grow up. But not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. Got into the car and went home. We agreed us there, we had dinner together, and went our separate rooms. Satisfied? Tell me about it again. Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. The scene wasn't ordinary for them. Who knows what little brat had done? Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and we went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this any further. Oh, oh God. This is getting real. No, you'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly I feel someone's eyes on my back, knowing that these moments should never, ever be ignored. I turn around. There's nothing there. What happened next? Uh, everything that happened next after happened after something. That led to everything that happened after what happened. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real. Sadly. However, I don't care anymore. 
I almost end up kicking the bag in the feet of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I'm moving in an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see a small insect crawling toward me out of my back. It's very glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I've been able to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me in a high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. So that's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one's kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. Oh man, that got so real. Holy shit. Oh, this game is something else. Like, I don't, I, I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. I just kind of pursued and the story was like, pick me up. It was all good. We went to our rooms. Instead, it was like, no, it was, she was screaming. She was biting him. She was kicking him and shit. And she got shoved into a car and it was complete silence. It was like, oh my God. It was like such a different turn, lady. <sighs> <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly. I was looking straight into a giant flame. And? I'd be so jealous. What do you think for Finn from flying the cage? It's locked in? And the cable. It's like an intimate inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's get to the surgery. Alright. Time countless. Unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. Let out a theatric yawn. Hold my arms up to the sides. <laughs> that? One, two. Then I raise my arms above my head. One, two, three, four. No four to help me freshen up? Good idea. Do you remember the exercise you've been taught? I think so. As it stands, what was it? Heels together, toes apart. Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down from five. Fine, you have the clock right in front of you, though. You can't look at his it. hands for too long. First, I feel like I started moving in the wrong direction, and then I despair altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock as a face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. It's really a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Why are you counting down? Oh my god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through you for the half an hour. Huh? We get it. Do you see the firefly? No. Let's get to searching then. Turn my eyes towards an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's glass of toothbrush sitting on it and a small tower is hanging about it. What a wonderful sight. The fireflies are smart and good. They would never go in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Okay. Are you serious? What's wrong? Let's think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they purposely want to lower their self esteem. Huh. Okay. What's this? Look toward a very high place on our ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. Better look somewhere else. Ugh! What cockroaches be out there? You forgotten? You're the one who told me a thing in my th thoughts of cockroaches. Yes, but there'll be no fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So that's why I play this place. Do you understand now? I'll pretend to. Huh? One more thing. It's just a radio. Yep. That's everything. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. 
I guess. I managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and find it, it's just going to get back to the starting point. No chase at all. Happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? I'll go to the balcony, breathe in some air. Some of those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone's watching me. Alright, then stay here. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. Oh, fuck that. Stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? This is a silly question. I'm going to sleep, of course. I mean, tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. I imagine myself being outside my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside a bag. And yet? You had to talk out loud for me and understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then. No. I have one more small spare to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I have way too much about it today. A lot of stuff I want to forget. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see you tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I, um, there's a scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also afraid that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm a little scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave your room until you tell me. Bully. No, you. No, you. Aww. You're know, sleepy. Sleepy girl. I don't let me sleep. My lower part of my living room is still very cold. I hurry and wrap myself in blankets. Even though the electrocutor is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. Don't believe me if I tell you how I deal with, dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyways, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course. I'm always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating around the air, strange silhouettes that appear in most unexpected places, bulging eyes through the tension of places. It was scary, you know. And one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room, couldn't move for a while, and silhouettes, letters, eyes were just hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And, well, deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yeah, I felt exactly that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, eyes stayed here. I guess they really liked this place. Always following my way, peeping at me, and I'm scared of them. I can't argue with them. But today, today, well, I still too scared to me. Of course, they're still listening. You know, use your hands. All right. So I chaotically twirl my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You don't want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea what to tell him. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Let's talk about something without stopping. It sounds silly, but it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, now as we realize that, we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley, an awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen this? <laughs> Finally. I hear a voice come from the other side. I turn around and see the boy with a weird expression on his face. Oh! You're late. Um, who are you? 
Boy blinks in bewilderment. I'm not going anywhere like this. Try again. And he takes a very deep breath. <sighs> you are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. S sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? Mine's Tresca. I give the brat an invalidating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. <laughs> no way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loneliness, and silence. He's a wacko. And his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go. And I need to think. I'd be happy to. But I don't know the way. Cheska puts on a cunning face. Smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to restore it. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine. It's not like the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times, he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. The fuck is that? Three the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. We had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way. We probably had a special staff for this. Someone who runs chains to the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. <laughs> and what's your name? None of your business. I was really slapping the little hell out of the brat. But a scary looking man suddenly by here behind the glass. He was holding us a cardboard sign that says, We're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go, what are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of crossing the long row of canned products, we realized we were lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Trisco lets go of my hand and walks comfortably toward one of the few store's customers. That person same put their back behind us. He's studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither of them for the second part of this question, nor the reply he gets. But my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking at the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. It, yes, sorry. I grab Tusk's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer. His mouth ajar and his eyes propped. He's also shaking. Okay. Only when we turn around the corner, Tuska calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared! He said... What? No! Not again! Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Did you act normal? You... You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Knowing other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're me. Uh. Who? Me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drap. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hanging on the new side of the door. There you are! Me and Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you! Move! 
I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that formed after Tresca. I squeeze through towards him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier toward him. There's a bag of milk laying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue will nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Triska starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact your son is a retard, too. Holy shit! But... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote at the cashier. Of much higher value than you needed. Even counting in the stupid fees. Then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip in the back of silence. At some point, we end up turning around. Right, toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. Look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know, he turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination and stare at his back confused. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. This was, the, this was the game? I mean, okay. What? Is, is there multiple endings to this? I'm not gonna lie, I looked at YouTube and I saw like people, uh... I saw people, uh, having four hour videos of this. Uh, there you have it. A bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Hold up. Weird fucking game, I guess. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if I enjoyed it. I, I, that was a fucking trip, man. You know, yeah, I did enjoy it. It, it. it made me feel weird. I haven't played a game that made me feel like this. I've been scared. I've had joy. This is just something else. I don't know what I felt with this. But it was a nice, pleasant experience. I enjoyed it. And it was new, fresh taking. The credits stopped. Okay. But the music's still going. Oh, look, there it is. I'm going to hit continue. Can I? You tell me or not. Okay, that, that was it. Alright, guys. There's the, that's That's the game. Unless I look up alternate endings, and if there are, I guess I'll... Do another, maybe. Ah, love you guys. Have a good one. Stay fresh. It's a weird fucking game.